Well, because you've been doing this so long, I'm curious how you've seen the pandemic shift the landscape in the UK. We know that in the US there's been a, a dramatic impact on screenings and prevention measures, of course, because um, you know elective surgeries and procedures were were delayed for so long and then still there was fear of people going into the hospital. So what impact have you seen in the UK and how is it compared to the sort of general trend that you've been seeing in screening and prevention? Yeah, I mean, we've seen very similar impacts. So uh, huge delays in people uh, receiving any screening services, even being able to attend GP surgeries. And so what that le that's what, what that's led to essentially is uh, people not um, getting their diagnosis or not having an early detection because early detection is very, very important when it comes to breast cancer. Early detection can lead to a full recovery. Um, and so that is something that we're seeing uh, being delayed more and more. We're also concerned that the impact of COVID will take a long time for services to recover. And so ultimately that could lead to a lot of people having much poorer outcomes uh, once they do get their diagnosis. Um, so I do think that's that's a, a trend you know, across the world. We see this as uh, underlining the importance of prevention action and awareness about prevention. So, um, so many people aren't aware that there are lots of things that they can do in their everyday life to reduce their risk. Um, there's, uh, there are some very well understood um, risk factors such as uh, what we eat. So it's quite, it's well understood that, you know, eating um, a diet that's high in fruit and vegetables, that can help with lots of other um, risk reduction, but it also helps with reducing uh, breast cancer risk. Being physically active, um, that can reduce our, our breast cancer risk by up to 20%. But the other important thing about physical activity is that it really is like a magical pill. Um, it can reduce our risk of recurrence if we've had a diagnosis very significantly, and it can also reduce our mortality rate after we've had a diagnosis by up to 40%. So regular physical activity, we're not talking about marathons or crossing the channel, we're, we're talking about bringing um, simple moderate exercise into our everyday lives on a regular basis that has a huge impact. Um, and then other risk factors include alcohol consumption. So reducing our alcohol intake is very important as well for reducing our risk. Um, and, and then exposure to um, harmful chemicals in the environment. Now that's a lesser under, understood risk factor. And so um, there's been a lot of evidence over recent years to suggest that endocrine disrupting chemicals, which are quite ubiquitous in our environment, have been linked to increased breast cancer risk. And that's an area of particular concern to us, um, primarily because there is so much more research that needs to be invested in this area for us to really understand the impact that EDCs have on our general health, but importantly in our case uh, with breast cancer. So that's an area that we invest in as a charity. Uh, we're one of the few charities, certainly in the UK, that invests in research that looks into the links between EDCs and breast cancer risk. And, um, and of course, uh, we raise awareness at a government level so that um, government is aware that it's very important to put environmental protections in place to protect the public. So there's a range of factors that will contribute to increasing our risk. And if we take action now urgently, then we can reduce the amounts of people who hear the words you have breast cancer. Um, and this is such an important thing now, given that there's such a stress on our services uh, across the world, but we're seeing it in the UK just as much.